I'm Sequoia with Project Tree Collard. I'm here in Berkeley, California in July to talk to you about thinning apple trees. I know that people watching this video are growing apple trees in many different climates. There's something called June drop and July drop. Here we have July drop. So the apple trees naturally thin themselves by dropping apples in July. But in other parts of the country, I understand it's June. So you can figure out what area you're in, but you will see around your apple tree a lot of small apples on the ground, and that is your apple tree's best effort to thin itself so that it can have strong branches to hold up the weight of all these big clusters of apples. But we humans need to come in and thin them out so that we get larger, you get more delicious apples. Also make sure that they're in the sun and they're getting adequate air flow and also for the health of the trees and pest issues. So here in California, we have light brown apple moth and we have coddling moth. So my method is going to be focused on preventing the moths more than other parts of the country that don't have this issue. So in this cluster down here, first thing I'm gonna do is remove some of the leaves that are touching the apples because I can't see the condition of the apples. I can't see if there's already moth damage. And often the moths like to hide under the leaves. So now I can see this, this bunch is a little bit, quote, deformed, but I'm gonna still find them delicious. So what I'm gonna do is a little different, again, than other parts of the country that don't have these moth issues. I'm gonna take out the center apples so that they are not touching each other. So the apple, moth cannot travel from apple to apple if it comes. And now that I've taken away leaves and they're in the sun, there's nice airflow there. So those are going to mature into nice apples. Right nearby here, I have a little cluster of two apples. I can tell that the top one has worm damage. So I'm going to show that to you. So we do not want to keep this on the tree. And this other apple I'm checking looks great and it's in the sun, so that's wonderful. Here we have two apples touching and I'm just gonna go ahead and remove it so it's one. I tend to not need every last apple off this tree and that one's just gonna be able to really become nice and big. So here we have kind of a jumble of apples. So just to make sense of it, I kind of look through and say, okay, these three are from one fruit spur. And maybe I'm gonna move some leaves just so moths can't, the caterpillars can't hide in there. And I'm gonna leave the one that's in the sun and I'm gonna remove the lower two. So that one's got a nice blush to it. Here I'm checking for moth damage, that's fine. That was just remnants of a flower. But we've got two and this one's heading into the shade so that's not going to be as nutritious of an apple and it's not going to be as yummy. So I went ahead and removed that so that jumble became two apples. I wanted to show you one reason why we thin apple trees, which is probably the most important one, is to prevent things like this. So I had a major branch here on this apple tree coming this direction, which made the tree nice and balanced. And I hadn't thinned the apples yet and we got a freak rainstorm and with the weight of the water and the apples, it ripped right off. So here you can see that bark is you know, starting to heal over, at least on this upper portion. And I worried at the time that it might introduce rot into the central trunk and actually I would have to lose this entire part of the tree if it rotted out. And it looks like maybe it's gonna be able to wall it off. It's hard to say at this point in time but it's really important to thin your apples so that they can hold up the weight. So here's a close up of some of the apples that I've removed and I'm gonna explain why. Like this one was eaten by a squirrel. <laughs> this one's just kind of deformed and it's not, doesn't look like it might develop into that yummy of an apple. Um, that one wasn't gonna develop fully and it has worm damage. This one has worm damage and this one's just kind of misshapen, has a lot of pock marks, and it has some sun scarring going on. So, so be sure to collect these apples off the ground or just put them directly into a container like I have here so that the worms are not gonna continue their life cycle in the soil. 
I generally have a separate compost pile for noxious weeds and diseased plants and things like the apple moth that I don't want to just spread around my garden at, um, at large. But I do know a lot of people take a lot of these useful ones and they make pectin and different culinary things out of the unripe apples. I'm not sure because I've never done such things. Um, but that's definitely a possibility to put these to good use if you really want to and have a need to. So thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And for more information, you can go to projecttreecolored.org.